Okay, 7.2, we're gonna talk about substitution method of solving linear systems. So remember, uh, linear means line, system means we have two or more lines and we're trying to find out you know, where they cross or where they intersect or the point that makes both equations true. In the last lesson, we talked about how to graph the two lines and see that common point of intersection. Here we're gonna use an algebra method called the substitution method. Now, our goal is to end up with one equation with just one variable. But if you notice, we're starting with two equations that have two variables. So how do we go from two equations with two variables down to one equation with one variable? Well, I'm gonna show you an example, and this is where the substitution comes in. See how y equals two x minus five? Since y equals this whole quantity here, let's put that in place of y in the other equation. So I'm gonna show you that right here. So we've got three X plus four, and instead of putting Y, I'm gonna put what Y equals. Now, if you look closely, you can see there's just an X in this equation. It's only one variable. So now we can solve it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna distribute the four. So that's eight X minus 20, bring down the three X, right? And we've got, let's see, 11 X minus 20, add the 20 to both sides get the variable by itself, divide by 11, because we just want to get x by itself, so x equals five. Now that's great, but now we have to figure out what y is. So we can put five back into this equation for x, or this equation for x. I'm gonna put it into the top one. It doesn't really matter, you'll get the same answer either way. Two times five is 10, minus five is five. So you can see that the y value is five. Now when you write your answer, you're gonna to wanna to write it as a coordinate, like an x, y coordinate, because remember, this is the point where the two lines are crossing. Now, if you graph these two lines, you would get the exact same result. This technique is a little bit easier because you don't have to graph the line, plus you don't have to worry about your line being a little bit off and your answer being a little bit off, right? So this is gonna give you the correct answer each time. Now, another way to have done this problem is I could have maybe solved for x, like I could have like found out what this x value was by subtracting 4y and dividing by three and then substituting it for x in that equation. You can solve for either one of the variables, either y or x, and then you substitute in the other equation. We're gonna do some examples so you can see how this works. So take for example like number one. I'm gonna ask you a question. What variable do you think is easiest to get by itself? This x, this y, this x, or this y? What would you say? What's the easiest to get by itself on one side of the equation? Well, if you said this x, see this is a little tricky because there's three x here. I would go for this y right here because number one, it's positive, plus there's only one of them. So I'm gonna subtract three x from both sides. So if I do that, I get y equals negative three x plus 10. So are you with me on that? So all I did was subtract three x to get rid of it on the left, get it over here onto the right side. Now you can see we know what y equals. It equals negative three x plus 10. I'm gonna put that in place of y in the other equation. So it's just like a substitute teacher, you swap them out. You know, if your math teacher's not there one day, another math teacher shows up, right? So that's the idea. So we've got now two x minus, and instead of y, I'm gonna put what y equals in parentheses. So I wanna treat it like a group. So now you see this negative here, I'm gonna distribute the negative into the parentheses. So that gives us a positive three x minus 10, bring down the two x, okay? This is 5x minus 10 equals 10. Add 10 to both sides, so that gives you 5x equals 20. Divide by five, and you can see that x equals four. Now, a lot of students stop there because they feel like, oh, I did the algebra, right? But what you wanna do is you wanna put this four back in for x here, here, or here. Anyone will give you the same result for y, but I would put it in here since y is already by itself. So y equals negative three times four plus 10, so that's a negative 12 plus 10, which is negative two, so our answer is gonna be four comma negative two. That's the point where the two lines cross. Now, if you're not sure if you got it right, you can put it back in, four in for x, negative two in for y, make sure it makes this equation true, same thing here, make sure it makes that equation true. If it does, you know you've got the right answer. Let's go to number two. Want to learn algebra one? Check out my Learn Algebra One video course for sale where we go through 87 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra One. We talk about the important concepts, formulas, and we go through numerous example problems together to help you learn Algebra One. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to take you over there to get started with some of the free lessons. In the meantime, let's continue on with this video. The right answer. Let's go to number two. So 
What do you think? See if you can do this problem on your own. Of course, you can do all these problems on your own and check them with me. That's probably the best way, but sometimes it's good to watch me do a couple. Uh, but what do you think? Would it be easier to solve for this X, this Y, this X, or this Y? What do you think? Well, probably this one, because there's only one X, and it's positive X. So I'm going to get this by itself by subtracting 3Y from both sides of the equation. Okay, so that's going to give us X equals negative 3Y plus 13. Now, what do I do with this negative 3Y plus 13? Well, I want to put it in for x in the other equation, the one that we haven't used yet. So that's going to be 7. Instead of x, I'm going to put what x equals, the negative 3y plus 13, right? Minus 2y equals negative 1. So now we just have one equation with one variable, just y. All we have to do is distribute, you know, and solve this equation. So negative 21y plus, let's see, what does that come out to? 91 minus 2y equals negative 1. Uh, combine like terms, we get negative 23y. I'm going to subtract 91 from you know both sides. So that's going to give you negative 92. And then that means that y equals 4 if I divide both sides by negative 23. So now if y equals 4, I can put 4 back in for y here, 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 any one. But I'm going to put it here. It's a little bit easier. So x equals negative 3 times 4 plus 13. That's a negative 12 plus 13 which is 1. So now you can see 1 and 4, so our answer is going to be 1 comma 4. That's the point where the two lines cross. Okay, let's look at number 3 now. 3 and 4 are very interesting because you have fractions and you have decimals, which we really haven't seen yet. So how do we handle these fractions? Well, what you can do is you can do what they call clearing the denominator. You know, clearing the denominator. We talked about this earlier in the course. You want to get rid of those fractions by multiplying by the common denominator. So what's the common denominator of 2, 5, and 10? Well, it's 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this entire equation times 10. So I'm going to distribute, distribute, distribute. So 10 times a half is 5. 10 times 1 fifth is 2. And 10 and 10, these cancel, you just get negative 3. So I'm clearing the denominator. Here we have also a common denominator of 10, so I'm going to multiply that through everything by 10. So that's going to give us 3x plus 1y equals negative 2. Okay, so now you can see we're working with integers. It's a little bit easier. But let me ask you a question. Which variable should we solve for? This x, this y, this x, or this y? Probably this one, right? So we're going to do y equals negative 3x minus 2. I'm just subtracting 3x from both sides. But then what do we do? Now we know what y is. We put that in place of y in the equation that we haven't worked with, right? So that comes out to 5x plus 2. Instead of y, we're going to put what y equals. And now all we have to do is solve. So I'm going to distribute. That gives us negative 6x minus 4. Bring down the 5x. That combines to negative x minus 4 equals negative 3. Add 4 to both sides. So that's negative x equals 1. Multiply both sides by negative 1 x equals negative 1. Now if we put the negative 1 back in here, we get negative 3 times negative 1, which is positive 3, minus 2 is 1, so we know y equals 1, and now we've got our answer, negative 1 comma 1. Remember, it's x, y, z alphabetical, so I'm putting x first, y second. And again, if you want to check your work, you just put it back into both equations, make sure it makes both equations true, and you got it. Okay, number 4. What I would do in this one is I would clear the decimals. And the way you do that is I'm going to multiply everything by 10. When you multiply everything by 10, it moves the decimal point one place to the right. And you remember this from your pre-algebra class, right? So whenever you multiply by 10, it moves the decimal one place. Now, if you multiply by 100, it'll move that decimal two places to the right, 1,000, three places. But the key is you want to do the same thing to each of the terms in the equation. Otherwise, it'll change the equation. It won't be the same equation. So if we do that, we can see we're ending up with 7x minus 9y equals negative 32. And here we get 1x plus 2y equals 2. So which variable should we solve for? This one right here is going to be the easiest. Of course, you don't have to solve for that one, but it's going to make it a little bit easier. So now we know what x equals. We can put it in for x in the other equation. So 7 times what x equals. And now all we have to do is solve. So you can see we're getting negative 14y plus 14 minus 9y equals negative 32. Uh, let's see, that comes out to negative 20, uh, what is that, negative 23y plus 14 equals negative 32. Subtract 14 from both sides. 
negative 23y is equal to negative 46, divide by negative 23, and you can see y equals 2. If we put 2 back in here, we get negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. So it looks like our final result is negative 2 comma positive 2, x comma y comma z, right, alphabetical. Let me erase this whiteboard, and we're going to do a word problem so we can practice that, and we'll be right back with you. Okay, so now for a word problems. So you really want to get good at these word problems in algebra. So let's see what we have here. If you buy three notepads and two packs of pencils for $8, and your friend buys five notepads and one pack of pencils for $11, how much is a notepad and how much is a pack of pencils? So that's a mouthful. I think it's definitely a run-on sentence there, but thankfully this is math and not English, right? But uh, let's see, what are our equations here? Well, let's see, we've got to define our variables first. So what are we trying to solve for? We're trying to solve for how much is a notepad, how much is a pack of pencils. Now here's a nice technique that really makes this a lot easier. See if you can use that first letter. We've been using X's and Y's mostly up to this point, but let's see if we can use that first letter. We're gonna use N for notepad, P for pencils. So you've got, let's see, you bought three notepads and let's see, two packs of pencils and that cost $8. Your friend, on the other hand, bought five notebooks and one pack of pencils, and that cost $11. Now notice what we're doing. We're taking the, the number of notepads times the price of a notepad. So let's say the notepad was a uh, dollar, that'd be three times one is $3. Say a pack of pencils is $4, that'd be two times four is $8. So you have the uh, cost per notepad times the number of notepads. So these are our two equations. Now all we have to do is solve the system like we were doing before. So we either want to get this n by itself, this p, this n, or this p. Which one do you think would be the easiest? Probably the one that only has one, right? So let's take this uh, one p right here, and let's solve for that by subtracting 5n from both sides, okay? So if we do that, we get one p equals negative 5n plus 11. And since we know what p equals, let's put that in for p in the equation that we haven't used yet, right? So this will give us just one equation with just one variable. Okay, so you see how I did that? I replaced this p with what p equals, negative 5n plus 11. And the key is to treat it as a group, so I always put it in parentheses. So now what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the 2. That gives us negative 10n, uh, let's see, plus 22. Bring down the 3n here. Okay, 3n. And let's see, that gives us a negative 7n plus 22 equals 8. Subtract 22 from both sides, and you can see we're getting negative 7n equals negative 14. Divide by negative 7 and you can see that a notepad is $2. Now if we put two back in, we can put it into this n, this n, or this n. Probably easier to do this one because the p is already by itself. Negative five times two is negative 10, plus 11 is one. So we can see that the p equals one. Now remember, it's a story problem, so I would write a sentence. I would say a notepad costs $2, a pack of pencils costs $1, because your teacher might not know that P is for the pencils. And they might think P is for the pad, you know, notepad, um, and so on. So you always wanna just at the very end write a sentence, uh, but this helps by using that first letter so you yourself know what you're solving for, you know, N for notepad, P for pencils. But if you wanna use X and Y, you're more comfortable with X and Y, what I would do is I would probably write somewhere like X equals the notepad, price of a notepad. Y equals the price of a pack of pencils, like that. So great job. We're going to move on to another technique for solving systems in 7.3. I'll see you there.